the green light. The distance she gets on this particular vault is about 22 feet. She has two vaults, remember. I think if they don't give her a 10 here, the judges may fear for their life. That's right. They will tear the roof apart. <laughs> Boy, she landed. There it is. She did a 10. The gold medal. The gold medal goes to Mary Lou Red. Oh, what a party they'll have in Fairmont. What a nice shot. Good job. She has another ball and she's going to take it, huh? Well, if she does the same thing, <laughs> she does. It was no accident, folks, huh? Just to prove it. Oh, look at this. He's not tired now. No. Oh, what a tightly wrapped package of explosives. Mary Lou Dann den Auftritt der elegantesten und vielleicht schönsten Turnerin von Ludmila Turischeva aus der Sowjetunion. Mit dieser wunderschönen Übung und dem perfekten Abgang hat Turiceva die Entscheidung für ihre Mannschaft. The delay up there for the previous. Oh, here we go, the green light. She mounts with a half twist to the high bar. There she goes. Right to the handstand, perfect timing. Her knee stand slightly on that reverse hex, but I don't think the judges will take off. They didn't in the previous competition. The giant swing, stomach whip, right to the ret and flip. Her peach basket is right to a handstand. Timing is just right with Mary Lou tonight, so far. Down with a half twist. and trains here in suburban Houston. There's a part of her that's still a young girl, but she's far, far from her home in Fairmont, West Virginia. She came to Houston to live with a family that isn't her own for just one reason, to train with a very special coach, 
Romanian immigrant Bella Caroli. I made the decision to train under Bella, and that's the best decision I've made in my life. And it was very hard at first because I was I come from a big family, and it was a hard decision because I was very close to him. And I never did anything like that, you know, moved away. I've been on trips, but never, you know, been away for him so long. She's been away, but she hasn't been idle. Watch this. It's called a retin, named after Mary Lou. She was having a little trouble in practice right on here. Look at the power. She says Bella has enabled her to take more risks and achieve higher scores. And she now has a string of first place finishes and the 1984 national championship to show for them. Mary Lou and many other young gymnasts have come to Bella Caroli hoping to follow in the path of his most famous pupil, Nadia Comaneci, the perfect 10 of the Montreal Olympics in 1976. Bella strives for perfection. And so what if you make a skill to your feet? You know, it's not good enough for him. It's going to be done perfect. That's what connects, you know, a good gymnast and a great gymnast, you know. It's got to be perfect. And that's the way it's got to be. And, you know, you get kind of a self confidence build up and self-discipline build up so you know you know if it's good or you know it's not discipline confidence the staples of life in Caroli's gym there's pain too each morning Marta Caroli makes sure that Mary Lou and teammate Julianne McNamara are working and dreaming of the future at an hour when other girls their age are just getting up for school I don't live a normal teenager's life, you know, going to football games and school dances and stuff of that sort. But I've traveled around the world and I've seen places people twice my age haven't. So I think it's an equal trade-off. I'm going to have time. I'll be in college and I'll have time after to do what I want. But, you know, I think to have a chance of a lifetime to be in the 84 Olympic Games, especially in Los Angeles, you know, I think it's even a better, better lifetime for me. Eine perfekte Vorstellung von Tsukahara, die eigentlich einen Zehntelpunkt mehr verdient hätte. Aber die strengen Kampfrichter in München vergeben nur eine 9,9. Der japanischen Mannschaft ist es egal, denn wie schon in Rom, Tokio und Mexiko geht auch in München olympisches Mannschaftsgold in ihr Land. Die Künste von Tsukahara am Reck und sein unwiderstehliches Grinsen machen den Japaner zum Zuschauer. And this girl, Nadia Comaneci at age 14 in Montreal. Kathy Rigby, by 1976, was a commentator working with Chris Schenkel. Beautiful rhythm, right to a handstand. Oh, look at that amplitude. Ooh. She is really moving well. 
Another handstand. Look at that. Right to the handstand. Gorgeous routine. Beautiful. And the crowd loves it. Thank you, Kamenice of Romania. Oh, and now look at her play, Michelle. Most of these good fans have been Over 18,000 uh, delighted with her performance. A perfect spin! The first one! The first time I have ever seen that in a Olympic competition. A perfect spin! Oh, now they begin to stand here before us. This is the first day of competition. Oh, this is such a Such a performance. Look at how excited you are. In the nights to come, the thousands of people jamming the forum would have much to cheer about. Before the week was over, Nadia would receive seven perfect marks of ten, a feat unprecedented in the sport. There was no question now that women's gymnastics had taken a dramatic turn. The elegance and maturity of Chaslovska and Turistjeva had given way to the athleticism and agility and the courage of girls in their early teens. Olga had bridged the gap from woman to girl child in the sport, and now Nadia had become the embodiment of youth. Some wondered if anyone could be perfect at 14, but the judges thought Nadia was, and the crowds agreed. And what of Olga? She was there in Montreal, but four years had made such a difference. At age 21, dark circles had replaced the blithe spirit in her eyes. She was still good, but not great. Uncertainty had won overconfidence. The world that had opened to her in Munich was now receding into the past. Nietzsche on the uneven bars. Chris, this could be the highlight of the compulsory event. She is one of the technically strongest, best gymnasts that I've ever seen. Watch this. Beautiful rhythm, right to a handstand. Oh, look at that amplitude. Ooh. She is really moving well. Another handstand. Look at that, right to the handstand.
gymnastics career. She was born Nadia Elena Komenich. By the time of this film, at age 10, she had already been immersed in gymnastics for four years. She was always determined. Her first vivid recollection is at age two, toppling a Christmas tree while trying to reach some candy. The tree fell on top of her, but the candy remained clutched in her tiny hand. Her mother tells of Nadia being obsessed with tree climbing. Nadia simply says she was a tomboy. In her hometown of Onesht, the six-year-old child's day began with four hours of training, then academic classes in the afternoon. In time, more practice was added in the evenings. She ate lunch and dinner at what we would call a training table, then took the 10-minute walk to her home and her homework and sleep. Eventually, she moved into the hostel, connected with the new gymnastics hall in Onesht, but she remained close to her family. She loved gymnastics, and the life of a developing athlete was just plain fun. After preliminary training by early coaches, Bella Caroli became her Svengali. In her biography, Nadia says, Bella demanded absolute obedience and had complete power over us. In her first competition at age nine, she helped her team win the Romanian National Championship. However, she remembers most her humiliation in falling off the beam three times. Yet as the years progressed, Bella, the demanding coach, continually and consistently supported and led her quest for perfection. That quest took hold when she upset the Soviet reigning champion Ludmila Turischeva at the 1975 European Championships. It was the first of three such victories. Then on to Montreal, her first perfect 10 followed by six more tens out of 16 performances. That accomplishment was so extraordinary and unprecedented that the Olympic scoreboard could not accommodate a score of 10. Well, the officials improvised as best they could by registering a one to the crowd. As the genius of her technical ability became more and more validated by the judges, the press became somewhat unkind while continuing to praise her gymnastic ability, they harshly characterized her personality. They called her Little Miss Perfect, the gym machine, and the ice queen. We now know their criticism was unjust. She simply was a shy 14-year-old athlete concentrating on the sport she loved. In 1977, the Romanian team walked out of the European Championships in protest of the scoring. And then, as we see here, a different Nadia appeared at the 78 World Championships in Strasbourg, France. She was taller, yes, but most of all, she had put on more than 20 pounds. Although she won a gold medal on the beam, somehow her floor exercise reflected the adolescent frenzy of a girl trying to hold on to childhood in the face of burgeoning maturity. A year later at the World Cup in Tokyo, amid unfounded rumors of actual suicide attempts, Nadia arrived, jet-lagged, adorned with a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. She then blew the gymnastics world away one more time by revealing herself now as a magnificent young woman with the same talent and ability she had in the past. At the World Championships in Fort Worth shortly thereafter, she paid the price for the intensity and deprivation involved with her comeback. She was unable to overcome an infection in her wrist. After bravely competing in the beam to keep her team in contention, she had to withdraw with the echo of a fan shouting, We still love you, Nadia. After the Moscow Olympic Games, where she won two gold medals and a silver in the all-around, the world's last look at Nadia was here at the World University Games that were held in Bucharest, Romania in 1981. She lighted the torch to inaugurate the festivities. And she responded to that honor by scoring a perfect 10 in the floor exercise, another 10 in the vault, and winning a gold medal in the uneven parallel bars. Again, this was three years ago. She hasn't competed or trained since. This was the last time she was seen in competition.
And what of Olga? She was there in Montreal, but four years had made such a difference. At age 21, dark circles had replaced the blithe spirit in her eyes. She was still good, but not great. Uncertainty had won over confidence. The world that had opened to her in Munich was now receding into the past. But all too soon, She's in second place coming into the final round. If she can get a 9-9 here, she could tie for the gold medal. As she's gotten her first Olympic medal. Can she get a gold? Jim? 9-9 nine, nine, to tie Jan. Go ahead. A 9-9 nine, nine after the week we've had wouldn't surprise me a bit. Correct myself. It's a 9-9 nine, nine to tie Lasakovich, of course. Let's just let her exercise play because all the big stuff comes near the end. 9-9 nine, nine to win, by the way, not to tie. 9-9 nine, nine to win. Okay, that little back walk over is just openers for this little gal. too far off. I think this is the part we're waiting for. Backflip and a front off. Look at the gal go. And third in her routine. This may be the moment she's been building towards all week. If you see a 9-9, Olga Corbett's won a gold medal. There it is. You saw it just behind her. And now listen to the crowd. They got what they've been wanting since Monday night. she takes the lead away from Milosevic. If she gets a 9-9-1-2, she moves ahead of Boginskaya into second. Great start. Beautiful high full in. Perfect landing. Time and time again, her coach, Steve Minowa, says she's ready. She's ready. We're here to win. And so far, she's proved it. There's a whip through to Pike double back. She stayed in bounds there. <laughs> Betty Okino's first fault, 9-7-8-7. She just completed her second fault. This is a great routine, and I'll tell you, that's the most critical skill till the end of the competition for her. She's got two chances on vault. So Shannon Miller. Milosevic. If 
She gets a 9-9-1-2. She moves ahead of Boginsky into second. Scores up a 9.975. хочется увидеть всех но давайте посмотрим как выполняют румынские гимнастки вольные упражнения теодору унгуряну Наши девушки набрали 49 баллов ровно, а спортсменки Румынии 48 и 75 соты. 9,75. Оценка Теодору Унгуряну. Well, she's dealing from a real strength. She scored 985 in this event earlier in the competition, and she is a real knockout. We could end up with a tie here, which means they have to go to other tie-breaking means. Did That's you see that double start. pull? Ooh. Wow, double pull twister. It's nice to see her pulling out none of the stops, or pulling out all the stops, whichever way you want to look at it. Notice that Ludmilla also uses much lighter music than the Russians used to. Yes, she does. Raus auf den Holm zu kommen, ist ein bisschen schmerzhaft. Ludmilla hat sehr schön getont. Ich konnte sie übrigens vor einigen Wochen wiedersehen, als yeah. das Treffen hier in München war. Anlässlich dieser Olympischen Spiele vor 25 Jahren, das war besonders schön. Sie war mit ihrem Mann Valery Borsov eingeladen. Und ja, da konnte man ja gleich zwei Fliegen mit einer Klappe schlagen. Ja. <lacht> Back with a half twist, the pike position, right into a round off the flop, back, some in the tuck position. Gosh, 
gosh, this gives me a thrill to watch someone work this way. What talent. 11,000 people agree, and I'll bet you four judges do too. Full twister, done with all the class in the world. You bet. Talk about poise. With Milikura Sheva, she needs a 9-8 to win the gold medal. 9-9, she's won the gold medal. With Milikura Sheva coming from behind on the final ex exercise to edge out Karen Yans.